here on Stream D. It's Cloud9 versus Hellraisers. I know we've been through it all, through the fire, through the flames, through 120 minute games, but this has all come down to this. Cloud9 versus Hellraisers. Lyrical Merlini, two casters for this one. What you thinking, man? I think Hellraisers are just in a bad place right now mentally. It's hard to overcome that. Dota is a very mental game. You can't just autopilot that. Your emotions are going to affect you. When you get a girlfriend, your play gets worse. When you're depressed, your play gets worse. When you're happy, have a good time playing with friends. Generally play a little bit better. Hellraiser is probably the lowest I've been for. This is, what, what do you think is worse? If you're in the grand finals of the qualifier and you lose, or you get ninth place in the group at TI, which one do you think you would be more crushed over? Five seconds remaining. Probably the qualifiers. I think I'd be more crushed over that because then you there's the like the delayed reaction of seeing all these people being like, "Oh, I'm going out to the event. This is gonna be great," you know, things like that. What do you think? You were a player. I wasn't a player. That's the other thing. I'm not sure. I think they're both really hard. I think the thing about it, like, if you don't even qualify, at least, like, you don't have high expectations. Yeah. Right? But if you have high expectations going in, you're like, you know, you qualify for TI, you, you definitely think you're going to do better than 17th, 18th, and then you lose. Mm -hmm. That I think that, that I think that hurts more, personally. Yeah, I guess that's true, too. It feels like you lost something versus... You never had something to lose. Yeah. It's kind of like being a little fish in a big sea. Or a big fish in a little sea. I mean, as far as their careers go, each of these players individually, there's no question that getting to TI is, like, infinitely better. Because they make contacts here, you know, they maybe get to You tell them to that, people. dude. Okay. I'm you not go to their to. team room, you go tell them, <laughs> Hey, guys! <laughs> you guys have made some contact. Yeah. This is... <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> let's not let's not say that to them. I think that's fair. Yeah, th you know we were talking about it. Like, oh, are these computers still going to be around the caster rooms? And the guy was like, yeah, they're probably going to be gone. But you could ask one of the eliminated teams if you can play on theirs. Like, no, that's not going to happen. <laughs> no, they do not want to be close to anyone right now. Well, we're going to take a look. One final match. They're putting up a good face, and we'll see what they end up running this time around. Cloud9 going to take the Nyx Assassin again in the first phase with a Rubik and Clockwork. This match very much matters for Cloud9 because they would like to be able to get a higher scene than Execration, most likely. Wait, did they... Mm, wait, what's their record? Cloud9 went 1-1 one, one versus Execration. So, I, well, how does the tiebreaker work if you're 1-1? One, one? I believe that you play against the highest one, so it's your record against the top team. There. Oh, it is? Okay. So I think. After head-to-head -head versus each other. I think that's how it works. LFY 2-0, both of them. Okay, so then it would go to Newbie. Newbie. Newbie's not guaranteed to be second seed. Mm -hmm. But Execration and Cloud9 also both lost to Newbie, so that doesn't matter. All right, Invictus Gaming. <laughs> Invictus Gaming or Virtus Pro. I think Virtus Pro is likely to end up higher than IG, though. So okay. let's go by Virtus Pro. They both went 1-1. One, one. Okay, seconds. now let's go to IG. Okay, Cloud9 went 2-0. So Cloud9 actually wins the head-to-head -head against Execration. So even if they lose this, they're still 7th. But they do have a potential of getting 6th place, actually, if they win this. Because then they could potentially tie Digital Chaos, and they 2-0 Digital Chaos. So this is actually really important for them. Yeah, because if Six OG are the team that dropped down lower, that would mean that OG could not choose Cloud9 as an opponent. No, you choose opposite side. Oh, okay, right, you're right, you're right. So, so secret. Do you, it's the difference between playing Empire or IG oh. Vitality. Yeah. Really, for them right now. Okay. Well, I think that whenever these things come up, it's just, at the end of the day, just win the game. You know? Just win. That's all you gotta do. What are you gonna tell the Hellraisers? You can be their personal coach for a day. If I could talk to them and, and be their personal coach for a day... I would probably just go down to a grocery store and eat some food and try and stay away for a little while. <laughs> but what if you had to talk to them? Your players are depressed. You're going to bring them down? You're going to leave them in their time of most dire need? All right. I would probably, you know, put a little head around and say, you know what? We gave it a good shot. We came up. We showed our stuff. We weren't good enough this time, but maybe we'll get them next time. I feel more inspired already. Wow. 
we are going to be I'm not going to do that, but we are going to be seeing uh, the Batrider band out, Terrorblade, as well as Gyrocopter and a Shadow Fiend. Dude, first phase Witcher Wyvern, what's happening? It's so good. This hero, it's amazing. First phase? Maybe not. I don't see anything with these heroes that makes it really good either. Do you see anything that really sticks out to you? Well, I I, I think what's worse than that is like not being good against certain heroes. It's also bad for certain heroes, too. Okay. Like, OD steals a ton of int from the hero that's in the, in the Cold Embrace. It sets up for Sun Strikes, sets up for Mystic Flares. Slark also pretty good at dealing with 100. There's like a lot of heroes that you don't really want to be Cold Embracing. And I think that's that might be more valuable in some situations than his ultimate. I think his ultimate's really good versus like Meepo and like Beastmaster, Strats, Lycan. Wait, why is that hero in a big risk Lycan more often? Um, and yeah. Cold Embrace, pretty good, but almost no physical damage coming out. Unless you want to go Trez, right click, plus 60 damage Rubik. The dream. The dream. Dogfights did get it yesterday and got smacked. Yeah, that one was kind of hurting. Well, really going down low in their reserve time, Hellraisers. And it looks like with 18 seconds left, they're going to decide to go Lone Druid. Okay. That seems like it's not great against Winter Wyvern. But it's fine. It's good enough. Yeah. You don't. You're separated enough from your bear that it doesn't matter that much, and you're pretty tanky, so you don't actually. I wonder what build you go in Lone Druid though. The Maelstrom Lance build or the Radiance build? Probably Radiance. Yeah, I think that particularly in this type of a game, you like just default to what feels good, and maybe just trying to play whatever it is that you want to play. I do wonder what like drafting strategy changes, or if there even is really as much of it. For whom? For Hellraisers. Ooh, and a brew. Ooh. Now the Lance Maelstrom looks a lot better. Or Radiant. Actually, both are pretty good. Brew is sometimes seen as a counter to Lone Druid. You cycle the bear. You can also dispel the Rapid, which is pretty crucial against Lone Druid. And you can Drunken Haze, the main one. So, uh, actually, Radiant. Mm. Yeah, I prefer Radiance here. Because Radiance is still going to be doing damage even if you Cyclone the bear, right? Mm -hmm. So. Should be. I, I've been liking Brewmaster. We did a, a strat recently as well where you can go mid and... Um, I've I seen it a couple times in competitive, but you just Drunken Haze whoever the mid is, and then you taunt them because he has a new taunt in the game as well. Oh, I think they want to get this over with. I'm trying to push. Lone Druid Juggernaut, old school, old school. Pugna, last please. Yeah, Rubik there with the no field, a little bit of extra magic resistance for the creeps. Heck yeah. Clock Juggernaut though, not that great of synergy. And Nyx also pretty good versus Pugna. I don't think they can pick Pugna last. I wonder if it is going to be Clockwork in the three roll. For now, Cloud9, they want to also try and, and if not push, at least deal a hell of a lot of damage. Death Prophet taken. And I mean, that again, it's two heroes that. Uh, can deal fairly well with Juggernaut and Lone Druid, I feel like. You know, yep. Spirit Siphon. Spirit Siphon owns the bear. And you also heal a ton off of it. A lot of physical damage that goes through spin. Yule Scepter to deal with the Omni Slash. Yeah, it's overall really good here. I'm surprised we haven't seen more Death Prophet. And you have the defensive hero of Winter Wyvern. And Broodmaster's pretty nice defensively, too. Yeah, I really like DP. Well, a very well put together draft so far for Cloud9. The last pick is going to be for Hellraisers. Do we see some type of crazy cheese like a Chen last pick and run it with a Clockwork in the three roll? Ultimate push? Sounds like it could be devastating because Winter Wyvern. Beastmaster maybe? Okay. But first Winter Wyvern. Ooh. Winter Wyvern owns pushes, man. Yeah. They can actually they just play it like They have two pushing heroes, but they can just play it normal. Have them carry into the late game. Yeah, Splinter Blast is quite good at being able to deal with pushes, and then, like you were talking about, the Winter's Curse as well. So, the bands, things they need to be worried about. Um, I don't really know. I, I don't feel like there's anything that Cloud9... Like, they're already ahead in the draft, and they have another round of picks to go through. Maybe, like, a Meepo cheese or something? Or... Nah, they have Winter Warfare already. Yeah. Rude? Maybe? It's an off lane. Yeah, Brood actually is done. 
Brood would be the most disruptive of them. Did they, they banned it last game too, didn't they? I think so. Yeah. Nice Gotta take out the NP. Also hard to deal with, very frustrating. And Cloud9, maybe just gonna hope to draft around the Brood. What you gonna play, EE? He sometimes plays the DP in the safe line. Mm -hmm. So that could be the option, and then they take like a DK or something mid, or... A Dusa. Where's your right clicks? Dusa is pretty decent. But no Drow Aura. Right. Yuck. I mean, Dusa, yuck in general. <laughs> Except for the Ags build. That one was pretty cool. We saw that this morning against CK. Just owned him. It's GG. That Ags is underrated for sure. Yeah. I think Suns fan had him rated way lower than she should be. It's situa situationally amazing, which I think is way better than, like, decent all the time. Yeah. Weaver. All right, Weaver is going to be the last pick, the Envy hero. Versus Rubik and Clog? Okay, Envy, you do you, man. You do you. Dubious? Difficult. Okay. Players like their certain heroes, man. Remember when he picked Terrorblade the one time where it was an awful Terrorblade game? Five seconds yeah. Remaining. That was just yesterday. <laughs> Not a great Weaver game, I think, but he likes the heroes. He can get a lot done with it. So be it. All right. Last pick, Venomancer. Going to be played by Kaiser. So 3-3 three, three on the LD. Swift ending jug. It's going to be the offline MSS Brewmaster. <laughs> I kind of like Venno. I feel like he's in a cool spot. Uh, he sort of like has weird power peaks, though. You know, you get that level twenty-five talent. You start throwing around really, you know, huge wards. Yeah, they, they, I think if they want a Venno, I like the Venno AA combo. That thing is disgusting. Especially for us, like, Death Prophet Winter Wyvern, but unfortunately they picked their two supports up first. Uh, hey, Veno, I think, is also in a good place right now. He's not too strong, he's not too weak. Situationally strong. It always feels like there's a couple of those heroes where it's like, you're never really going to be upset at taking that hero. It's like how Juggernaut was a couple patches ago. But look at their heroes, though. Like, Winter Wyvern can heal, Brewmaster can ult, Death Prophet has multiple ways to heal, and Weaver can just time lapse. So, like, normally you want Venomancer ulti versus heroes that can that don't have a good way to deal with the ulti. Like Sven, for example. Sven can't really do that much about the ulti. But maybe we'll see a right-click Venomancer build. Doubtful, but no. one can hope. Do you want to keep your eye on Aoi this game and figure out how he got so much farm? Because I have a feeling he's going to do it again. I'm, like, concerned that I, I want to try this out in my pubs at a certain point. He's He was able to get so much really early on there. He's been getting a lot of farm since, like, TI5. I know, but I want to know how. <laughs> Player with the least deaths. Who does that sound like to you? Uh, maybe uh, a Fata? Maybe an EY? Uh, MSS. MSS is pretty good. Okay. Last hits at seven minutes. Who has the easiest lane? They're all dead! Maybe a DP? Yeah, I think DP probably has the easiest. Jug, it could be Jug though too. It's gonna be in Jug's lane. It's gonna be MSS. Yeah, okay, let's go with... Let's go with Fada there. Ancient stacks camp. That's a five. Oh, Venomancer though. It's a Med Veno. By 30 minutes. Yeah, I'm gonna go with We got some XDs drawn on the... <laughs> I like that. They're pinging on the map, so that way it creates an X, and then they're going D. That's next level. And teams with the most runes picked up. Um, last one. How about... Hellraisers is going to be moving around a lot. I'll take them for that. Fair enough. All right. Cloud9 heading out. I believe Pile Dice spotted that ward. Should be able to get a fairly easy D ward, I would imagine. Get your predictions. You get if you get 25, I think you get one level. During the group stage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you gotten yours yet? I don't think so, because we've only been in, like, one game at a time. I got um, mine. You did? Yeah. Predict better, dude. Actually, <laughs> I didn't get the 999 GPM, so I lost. Yeah. 
That's the real prediction test right there. They're all dead! The real question that I have this game is, is Envy going to build a pipe on Weaver? It's not bad for Sveno, but I'm, I really don't want to say that it's good this game. Yeah. I really don't. <laughs> I mean, it's been sort of working. Like, the past couple days, they've been able to pull together wins. Have and you seen their record? I I mean, there's wins on that record, right? Yes. But it's still heavily in the negative category. They are 5 and 10. 33% win rate. Yeah. I, I will have to say that I like the way that Cloud9 was playing Dota leading up to the TI. I, I completely agree with that. Like, that was good. Yeah. Uh -huh. On a scale of building pipe on Weaver to <laughs> LFY, uh, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's around an IGV. All right, so movement out across the mount. This is a close contender for new best taunt as well, MSS on the Brewmaster. And it looks like they're going to be sitting J4 in the mid lane along with Owie here to help out their mids in this battle of bomb wars. Yeah, and this is really frustrating to play against. Look at him. He's just going for the taunt and the walk away. He might be in a little bit of trouble, though. The spin's coming through. MSS may be gone too far. Is he going to end up falling? The answer is Why yes. Why did I put MSS? First blood going to swift ending. That is so much damage. Time to get a stick swift ending. Well, I think this is part of the reason why Cloud9 also wanted to go for the Weaver. It's that, like, traditional counter to a lone druid in lane. Is it? I, I think One-on-one, so. on one, it's pretty bad, I would actually say, for, for Weaver. Really? Yeah. Okay. I always thought because you can, like, get in behind where the actual lone druid is, you can deal damage to him. Yeah, you can, but you have to deal with this big honking bear that's in your face. <laughs> it does a ton of damage. 3-3 in a really sticky situation. TP, well, TP, T2, and jump. Oh. Yo, he has no stat on his bear. It seems unlikely to actually be able to do a ton. Oh, one of the mo other most memorable games that I casted was a lone druid who had a stout shield on his hero instead of his bear for, like, the first 15 minutes of the game, and he got crushed as a result. Oh, no. Well, 3-3 aware that that's not going to happen for him, at the very least. So, he has the bear brought out. No stout shield yet on the bear either, like you were saying. Does have a calling blade. But it looks like he's going to be relegated to the jungle, whereas MSS can get a little bit more out of the lane creeps. Like, how much worse is it go having to go to the jungle now as an offlaner? I think he can just get three and go back. So you don't think it's that big of a deal then? I think it's bad if you're permanently in there. But yeah. if you're just there for a few levels, get a bounty rune here or there, get like a level 3 that you need, not so bad. Well, DP in the mid's been able to get off to a nice little start here. Kaiser with the DD, 16 and 5. And it does look like, at least for now, pretty even farm across each of those lanes with nobody really that intent upon moving around, uh, with the exception of being able to pick up some bounty runes. Pylai Dai is heading mid. Don't know if he can do anything there. Is he looking for something? Like, it feels like it'd be a really hard kill to make. Is it that hard? Double slow? Arctic burn plus spear siphon? It's not bad. Okay. They... I wonder if Fada's actually going to try and bait out the cogs. Might be a pretty good move for him to do here. Let's walk in there. Does bait out the cogs. Spirit Siphon comes out. He called it. He did it. And Kaiser may be going to die. Right click comes through. The salve as well. Owie. He gets the last little touch. Finds that kill. Fata lives through it all. That was a little blatant on the cog baiting. Though. Yeah. You, he actually got caught by the cogs too. He could have <laughs> just popped his like he popped his clitter and then he just ran in deliberately. Like no one's gonna purposely get their clarity canceled. You want to make it kind of seem like it's not that obvious of a bait, but it worked. Although Fada does have to go home as a result because of the 
cog bait. Bait it. Yeah. So a little bit of a weird one, but it ends up working out for him. Um, He's and. ruining your most CS prediction. How do you feel about that? <laughs> it makes me a little bit sad, I'm not going to lie. Uh, maybe he can catch up in a little bit, or maybe we'll see some more rotations to find kills. I guess that's the thing, too, is that, like, it, at the end of the day, you can't really count on it since they're so mobile. The bear, no! Oh, okay. Did they get him? Oh, yeah, oh. That's really close. Oh! 90 HP. I'd love to get that one. Nice little influx of gold, but not going to happen. Is he going to TP back or just reset? Okay. We'll just be a resummon. He's like, screw this. I'm out. Arctic burn does so much damage. Health burn, 9% per second. Back to the jungle. Yeah, it's really good against the bear. Like, even just naturally against the hero with relatively... I'm going to have to hold that thought as MSS has been caught. He's taking a lot of damage and no great way for him to escape. Can't even get off the clap before he drops. So, bullying of MSS in the offlane. Hellraiser's putting stuff together. Gonna be your first here to die and the here to die the most. Nice prediction, Ben. Nice prediction. <laughs> okay. Um, Winter Wyvern is wrapped around the entire way, lays down a ward, but they spotted him out. Now Owie shows up. They want to try and find a kill here. He's somehow still living for the moment, but probably not for that much longer. And Fata trying to kill off J4 is gonna be able to get that kill. Hellraiser is brought for themselves, though. And so. Cloud9 lose two in the mid lane. What sick cog position, though, by Milan. Yeah, he died, but... Or, sorry, by J4. He blocked the Winter Wyvern from being able to escape over the trees. That was sick. And he also trapped... Uh, trying to block the DP away yeah. from Spirit Siphoning the bear. Oh, okay. Valiant yeah. Shrine. It's always good to see. So... Kaiser going for the 2-1-2 build. Uh, occasionally you see another point up in the Poison Sting. Not sure if that's what they're going to decide to go for here or not. But do you think that if you're this Venomancer, you want to start like just laying out the wards over and over again and pushing down towers? Or They're dealing a lot of damage to Kaiser. At least some He's not really making use of 2 one 2 mana regeneration. He needs to slow down this push. Has 11 stick charges, had the third point in wards now. And it's going to try and keep them from diving him too much at the very least. MB has got a free tower on bottom. That's why you don't want to jungle too much. Yeah. So as far as the bear build goes, is there anything that you really try and change around? I'm not seeing 3-3 pick up a Midas at all. Mask of Madness. Is he really nice. doing it? Yeah, that's pretty good on bear. Okay. I just worry about his bear getting owned by Arctic Bird and Spirit Siphon. Both percent based spells. That is a lot of damage. Yeah. Maybe Blade Mail? Blade Mail Bear. I like Blade Mail Bear. Makes up for the Mask of Madness, but you can only get that like third item. It does cost a decent amount of mana compared to his mana pool, right? Because there only sits with, what is that, 300? Yeah. That's fine. Only takes 20 left. Okay. And he has some natural regen on the bear mana. Well, the lane we haven't really talked about a ton with the exception of MSS dying is Swift Ending, who's been able to get level 7 now at 8 minutes in, has Omni Slash available. And they could think about, you know, trying to rotate him and find a kill with Omni, which is sometimes what we see out of Juggernauts. And this lone druid is going to TP to the shrine and head back out again. I don't know, do you like the idea of Swift Ending moving around here, or do you think it's better for him to just stay in lane and try and push down the tower eventually? This tower is so high. Pretty Where else is he going to go? Bottom lane, killing a Weaver? No, thank you. Yeah. Mid lane, perhaps, against a Weaver with ulti and a cold embrace. Also unlikely. I think it's better suited just to get its farm on. There's no easy kills for him. They'd have to make like a massive maneuver for like four heroes, I would say, in order to get something onto the side lanes. And if 
fact, they do bring up the rest of Cloud9 to try and do something, but Swift Ending going to be able to TP out with no level 6 on the Wyvern, obviously. Also, we saw the Rubik, Milan, head out as well. So, uh, final tally ends up being nobody dead, but maybe some pressure dealt onto the Tier 1 tower top since the bottom's already gone. AUI with uh, Arcane and 500 gold again. Yeah, so he's doing pretty well in cold again. Just not dying, man. He doesn't have that much CS, but just in the right place. The skirt by with the goose egg and the zero death. Cloud9 now in the mid, looking to maybe wrap around onto Kaiser. Fata, not enough mana for the ulti yet, but we'll have it if he pops the stick. In fact, they might just use Spirit Siphon and then the Crypt Swarm to find that kill. Did get out the ulti from the Veno, but it doesn't look like it's going to be enough to kill off the rest of these Cloud9 He guys. could have stick TP. Yeah. And then they would at least have gotten a Broodmaster ulti out of it. Hmm. Another value shrine. Yeah. Ten minutes in. Get that shrine. Ready to head back out again if they want. It still is really hard to take down these towers whenever Venomancer's in lane. I kind of like the why our, uh, Envy's been sort of sticking to these side lanes and getting damage on it whenever they get an opportunity. Oh, straight Mask of Madness. Wow, that bear owned that tower. I was like, what happened? They caught themselves, Pylai die, but now the Brewmaster ulti comes out as well. Aoi is off to the side here. They don't have Venno ulti. Swift ending, getting ran down. He gets hit by the boulder. A good bit of damage. They also have that spirit form trying to chase Swift ending. Can they actually kill him off, though? The lift up onto the clockwork and more damage being dealt. The clap to finish. MSS gets out. Now the exorcism pop. Vata dropping low, though. He's going to die to Milan. And now, with the bear doing so much damage, Impale stolen, Cloud9 caught in an awkward spot and going to drop because of it. Really underestimated just Mask of Madness bear. Show fight recap. Look at the damage. 1,800. I think he had DD for like two-thirds of the fight, but that's still ridiculous. It's an offlane lone druid. Yeah. So is this the hidden strat that they hadn't used in a while? Uh, the Drunken Haze a little bit frustrating, certainly. Yeah, that's why I was surprised he went for a physical damage build, but... Can't always keep it up on the Spirit Bear. And the tried to kill off the Courier, ends up getting caught instead. No chance for a time lapse, and that is actually also going to be the Swarm stolen. Wowza. Wanted to try and turn that, but it didn't end up happening. Classic <laughs> Doesn't show up for the team fight. He got a fair amount of damage on T2 on top, but this team definitely took a beating over there. You have to wonder if that might have been different had they been able to have enough extra damage coming out from the Weaver, but he did end up getting more gold, though, because of the, what, chicken? Uh, oh, wait, he didn't. He didn't. <laughs> um, Pylai Dai also getting some nice levels. He has been able to uh, get level 3 in Splinter Blast, which helps a lot against this push. Not quite enough to one-shot range creeps, but getting close to it. And it looks like top lane, Envy, with the Force Staff first. Just trying to do anything he can to stay alive. This is like feels like it's his build now. It's the new pipe. This game I can understand because it was first of the Last game, he didn't really need it. I would say he was farming a lot of time, but he does feel a lot safer with it. Milan looking for him. Milan does have level six. They're going to be able to steal Sakuchi, get the lift up, but she's going to back out again. Hellraiser's taking the tower. Winner Wyvern is here. Pops the Arctic Burn, trying to bring him down low. The rest of Hellraisers get into the angle. They're able to pop the ulti now. Connects onto the Jug. He's not nearly going to be brought down quickly enough. And MSS pops the ulti as well. Fata getting controlled by these cogs. Again, taking down Kaiser. Almost able to kill him off. And they are going to be able to. A second exorcism with barely anything done. Another lift up onto the clockwork. They're fighting nearby a shrine. This could be bad for Hellraisers. They don't quite get the Venomancer, though. And he manages to get his ulti off. Now Pylai die being controlled. They're going to be able to get off the Omni Slash. And with the spin, this should be enough to kill him. Even 
through that Cold Embrace and the Shrine Heal. Hellraiser is just dealing so much damage. And now they're going to be able to TP out. Do not believe... Well, they will be able to kill off this Clockwork as Milan tries to run away. And it looks like he'll be able to. Does Sakuchi out? They ping out that he could be in this area, but so hard to keep up with that Milan Rubik. <laughs> oh, Shikuchi, what a great spell to steal. Yeah. So, Hellraiser's putting stuff together, looking fairly strong here. Do you think that they can keep up this momentum? As Kaiser might end up dying. Do I think they can keep up this momentum? Uh, I think Venomancer's net worth is actually a little bit low. I think he needs to be farming those... The, he's on dire size, so he can farm those three camps with the Ancients very consistently. I think he should be much, much higher. Maybe closer to where uh, Swift Ending is, perhaps? Man. I mean, I guess that the, it is still a push strat, but certainly needing that net worth to keep up and... DP hasn't really gotten a good ulti off either. Oh yeah, that's oh, that's so sad for Fada. Yeah. He needs a Yules badly. He also just needs a little bit of a He has a little bit of trouble and gets hook shot. J4 with the plays. Yeah, the fear there as well. Aoi trying to save the life of his offlaner, but it's not going to happen. And Envy comes in maybe a bit too late here. Bear also chasing along. It's going to try and keep them away. Has Savage Roar available and can get the poof off in a second. Actually, ends up missing with it. They find the Impale, and that's going to be a bear kill, it looks like. Maybe he can do some tree shenanigans. Oh, run it. Wants to find it. Envy gets kill. Oh, wants it. He Jukes. Can't, he can't return. <laughs> Oh, man. Masked. <laughs> the downside. The build. But he still gets out. So Bear lives. Cloud Knight's teamwork is just not what it was one month ago. Like, they are just not on the same page. Fada keeps dying without any help. Uh, Envy, he could have perhaps been their bottom to save MSS with the four step up there. He wasn't there early on in the fight up top. Died by himself trying to snipe a chicken. There's just been a big lack of teamwork uh, overall from their team. Okay, now Kaiser is doing an Ancient's house. It will be an Ancient Sack on the north side, favoring this on the south side. Closer to his team so he can fight more often. Yeah. And he's been able to get off a couple of pretty good ultis. Almost level 12 too to get that level 2 uh, ultimate out. But it is Hellraisers. Trying to find themselves a position to push some more. They have a pipe on Venomancer now as well, so a lot of defensive items. Owie, Vendetta, 3-3 is by him. They are in true form. MSS tries to pop the ultimate. They're going to be able to find that kill. Great silence. He was about to get the return into the uh, Savage Roar, but... Smoke kill for the position three. Lotrun looks like he's gonna go for a super late Midas too. Seeing it as quick by, it could be like a 22 minute Midas. That would be. They're finally together though on Cloud Knight. That's great. Jug TP bottom too, so they can't really mount a great defense. It just has to be Venom trying his best to stall with wards. Yeah. Milan will steal Trip Swarm as well, so double. Yeah, that's a lot. And he actually has kind of a mana pool enough to sustain it. And with that, actually, Cloud9 are going to back out again. A little bit unfortunate, but it's the strength of Rubik. Really good at being able to de-push, really good at being able to just cause problems. Now 18 minutes into the game, we are looking at a 3,000 net worth lead for Hellraisers. Okay, Lone Droid went for Maelstrom instead. I think that's better. It still doesn't really solve the problem of Drunken Haze when MSS just spams that out on him. Yeah, I think they can put enough pressure though on the Brewmaster. Like, he, I think he can die in like a lift. 
if they connect the dots and such on him. So because he has to feel panicked all the time in order to get his ult off, he's not gonna be able to terminate. But he can still cyclone, so yeah, it doesn't really solve the issue of being able to deep brew. Luckily, he's like not that farmed though, so he's not that big of a priority mm -hmm. uh, for Cloud9. It's not like they're having a huge damage loss by the bear being up all the time, or up in the air, rather. I'm kind of wondering also with Baru, he's going back for a Midas. We also, I think, are going to see one on the Nyx Assassin. He has 2,000 gold. Uh, could decide to go for a Blink, but if Cloud9 do invest into all these Midases, we're seeing Hellraisers go for much more early pushing items. The drum on the Rubik and, you know, Manta Style is there for the Juggernaut. They might just get ran down. They're not careful with their itemization. Shouldn't be too big of a risk, I think. I think Death Prophet, if she's on the defensive fighting at her tower, I think she's in a much better spot. But right now, they're pushing a lot and she's getting ganked away from the tower, so she's dying. But if she can get Exorcism off, and stay alive for more than 5-10 seconds, uh, I think they'll be fine and they'll win the team fight. So I don't really think they're going to have that big of a risk of being pushed down right now. Even though there is like the pipe of the benefits and drums on the music. And they have the Winter Wyvern to stall out the pushes. And keep Fada alive. But they do place a trap at the Shrine Weaver. Is he going to walk in? Uh, and the almost, but not quite, no cigar. It looks like Aoi is actually going to be doing the Blink Dagger thing instead. So even if it would have been a possibility, it's not going to... I think one of them is fine now. Yeah. Oh, and this is the cool build. Uh, Venomancer going back afterwards, or rather Clockwork going back afterwards for the, uh, the Halberd. Unusual. Yeah, there's not a ton of right clickers really on... Cloud9, mainly it's just Envy, and even him, he's not really dealing the most damage in the world. But Fata, going to be cold embraced, pops the Exorcism, the first one that's going to be allowed to complete fully, as Roshan is going to drop, and nobody in range by Hellraisers to be able to come and contest. They were worried about a smoke wrap around, but come on, they're playing this. <laughs> expect as much. They have a lot of ways to scout, too. Venno, Mancer Wards, the Lone Druid Bear, and the Clockwork Hookshot. That's three ways, and not putting any of their heroes really at risk. Dying, but C9, next level maneuvers, next level rotating tactics. Can they next level again with the next Exorcism? That's the other thing we got to look out for now. It looks like Fada wants to build into a BKB. Completely understandable, given that there's a Venno Mancer in this game. And Weaver with the Aegis. Might be time for Envy to think about push in with the rest of his team to at least maybe take down a couple of these tier 2 towers. PKB? I don't know how I feel about that. He has a Wyvern on his team. Yeah. So that's why I don't think he necessarily needs one. PKB blocks a lot of clockwork damage. A lot of Kaiser damage. Venom damage. But he could have also gone for a foot. It's a little bit cheaper, and it's less detrimental for him late game. <laughs> Maybe he doesn't rely. I think his line of reasoning is that he doesn't. He can't rely on Yules because just you build the Yule, but he doesn't know that Jump's actually not going for the Yule yet, and it has a Maelstrom in his quick buy instead. Yeah. We'll see if he does decide to actually finish that off. I guess there's always the possibility he does go back for the Oh, okay. He went for Octarine instead. I like Octarine more. PKB is just like... If it were a Radiance Bear, maybe. Yeah. Or if Jug had Defusal, then maybe. But yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan of it. Juan able to keep on stealing Sakuchi. Always a great thing for him, and... Juan is actually bringing him somewhat low. Envy doesn't want to end up losing the Aegis here like this. Oh man, Owie almost caught him as well. Good jump out with that Sentry Ward. And now Milan gets caught by the Impale, but they don't have the vision. And now the Omni Slash actually ends up transferring over. And they won't find that kill. Omni Slash down. Unlucky bounces. Now you've got more caught here. And Owie is just dead. It was a three-person silence. They have the Manta style as well, so Thinning could think about turning onto this, but with no Omni Slash. 
like the best in the world. He does have to spin and then go immediately out of oh it. Oh my god. J4 in trouble. He tried to cog, and then he tried to right-click his cog, and then he missed because of the drunken haze. <laughs> and he was stuck in there. <laughs> oh, that's sad. I didn't quite catch a sight of that. That's, uh, that's really... It's an interesting interaction, to say the least. Cog TP's a bit safer for him. Again, forcing out Brutal to the stun is pretty important. Without Nyx, they don't have any ways to can cancel TP. Yeah, I need to like commit an ultimate for it or something. Yeah. Well, 24 minutes into it, the slow build of the lead by Hellraisers is being accentuated further and further as we're 6,000 gold up and almost 4,000 experience. But it doesn't really feel like it's a firm grasp by any means. You know, tier two towers are sort of steadily falling, but as Kaiser is going to get caught out there by rotation, they'll find these pickoffs. They're still losing towers, though. Yep, yeah, MV's getting really big, though. Yeah, pretty massive. MSS also just finished his hand of Midas. Maybe they're trying to bait this out here. Vata, Spirit Siphon, they show up. Get the fear, and now bear on bear action. Starting to eat him up. 3-3 already dropping low and might just end up dying. He had a buddy nearby him, but Milan just says, I don't want any part of that. And runs away, and now Envy diving in. He ends up getting caught in the cogs. Looks like they actually don't want to try and take this fight. Impale a little bit off the mark. J4 still alive for the moment. They are going to Omni Slash turn, kill off one, maybe going to kill off another. He ends up getting caught by the Spike Carapace stolen from Milan and Aegis now down. Oh, that could have been a little bit better for Cloud9, but <laughs> I expect nonetheless. Brewmaster's fighting the fight. They weren't able to use Exorcism with Arcane Ring, but we'll give it off the first time. Nice silence coming out there. Yep. Still holding on to that Manta. Swift ending if you wanted to use it. It's going to drop the healing ward as well. I dare you to kill that Envy. He wants to. I know he does. He sees plus 75, plus 75. Oh, they got him caught again in the Sakuchi in. Great play by Milan. Almost able to kill him with the spike carapace damage, but... Ah, it's not quite there, and still slowing down Envy for the moment. They aren't going to be able to lift him back out. Everybody gets out. Really good play there by Cloud9. Wow. He could have manta for that extra little bit of damage. He could have cast crit on command. He could have... Uh, <laughs> they didn't get the ulti off on anyone, on Venomancer. Venomancer, like, he always feels like he's one item behind. Maybe not even necessarily committed for the full dark type. Could have been good for him. Didn't have, didn't have Pike, didn't have Blink. It looks like Swift Ending just going to get pummeled in mid. Yeah, they even used the Winter Wyvern ultimate for that. Just to ensure that he couldn't spin TP out. And that's a big problem. Like, so often Juggernauts rely upon that as their get out of jail free card. Not this game. Okay. So Cloud9 now striking back in a big way. They've taken down the Tier 2 tower just about in the top lane. And looking to maybe set up for more. They can manage to find somebody. You know what Lundra is getting to deal with the load or deal with the bear? Oh, the split. Kaiser is. He does have stick charges, but yeah, it seems unlikely to be able to live through that one. And they'll be able to kill off these wards as well. Things looking a lot better for Cloud9 again. The tower. Take some more damage, but Lone Druid pushing in the bottom lane. So, in your estimation, do you feel like Cloud Nine's still very comfortable in this one? Is there anything they need to be like really worried about? I think super late game, even like 20 minutes from now, I think Hellraiser skills a lot better. Shot misses. Because the spirit bearer is getting really big, and then once he gets the BKB, he can actually start pushing out a lot of damage, especially to BKB. Like Nick Assassin, Nick Assassin hates BKBs. Yeah, that plus 50 spirit bear damage is pretty great talent at level 15. 
particularly when you start dealing that damage to the towers. There's that siege engine. Monster. Yeah, the Venom will eventually get rid of them. Normal Venom damage is probably like one. Maybe like 150, 120, like 150% of the highest other damage dealers in the game. And I can't really see his damage in right now, but it's, it's probably like way lower than it is. Oh, Cold Embrace saving Owie there. Again, a really nice play. Milan did steal Vendetta and now is going to be running around once he decides to use that. Swift ending. Was slightly gone on, but. So Omni Slash down, Clockwork finishes off his Hand of Midas. It does really feel like Hellraisers are getting set up for the later game, and this is even without 3-3 really showing up in the fight, so he can keep the split push going bottom to his heart's content. Yeah, eventually he can get eggs too. And Cloud9, they have to team fight to push high ground, and they aren't, I don't know if they're going to be able to get to that point where they can actually split push out the lanes, but 3-3 might get caught up by AUI over here. And Envy looking as well. They found eyes on him. The damage is there as well as the bugs. 3-3 trying to take it off of him for the moment. We'll be able to do it. How he's still here. They're bringing in Milan also. And Cloud9. They're tempting fate. I don't know if this is going to end up working out for them though. There's still the Vendetta in the area. He might drop down a Sentry Ward. Milan. The rest of Hellraisers are coming in. they got to realize that something's happening. Are they going to go on him? <laughs> you can tell they want to. All right, they decide to go. Now they jump forward. Milan's caught himself a Brewmaster. The Brew is gone. And now Cloud9 need to run away with the rest of their heroes. The problem is that they also have a creep wave here, Hellraisers. And the rest of uh, Cloud9 is on the other side of the creeps. Are they going to push high ground with this? It's uh, it's gonna be a little bit slow. They did manage to clear out the creep wave. Envy looks like he's trying to kill another one. But in the meantime, we'll see 3-3 three, three just... His build is really good for Siege Tiger. Yeah, his bear is gonna... He's got BKB now too. Look at this thing, it's gone. All right, well, they end up going for the Winter's Curse and immediately going to be saved. He just backs out again. The bear still standing strong. He can go up with the next round of Mask of Madness if he wants, but they were able to kill off the creep waves at the very least. I think you probably just BKP and take it out, but they don't have any creep wave. GG. Do they know that there's no backdoor protection still? If they did, they probably would have gone in. Hello, AUI. Just waiting for them to TP out. Yeah, wanting to find a pickoff. Mojo coming around from behind. Is this actually going to work? The Impale is off the mark. And now the rest of Hellraiser is going to end up TPing back home. So, Kaiser, you're not. You don't even have to play Yeah, he's, uh, he's giving up his life for the cause. Buy your item quickly. Don't lose your gold. No, Kaiser. <laughs> oh, he lost 300 gold. That's a little unfortunate. He had some time for, to buy that. Yeah. And he had a th like 1,000 gold exactly. Mm hmm. Okay, so next item up, 4-3-3, Deso. At least that's what he's got his quick fight for the moment. Seems like it could be pretty good. Yeah, it's very nice here. Cloud9, wanting to move in and take down Roshan for themselves. So yeah, pretty easy. You know, even though they're, they don't have to deal with Too much physical, not enough magical, cold embrace will destroy them. They're at least sort of oh, over Milan. there. What? I'm trying to go for the steal. Okay. As a Rubik. <laughs> I was like, what the heck is happening? But he just ends up blowing up. All right. Well, Milan ends up falling. And now it looks like Cloud9 are the ones who want to try and make this pressure happen on the mid lane. Fata Exorcism about to wear off. All the spirits come back in. But still the tower is starting to drop while 3-3 pushes down this bottom lane. And they're able to actually catch now onto Kaiser. He's in trouble. Envy diving for this one. They're bringing in the clockwork, but it's going to be a little bit too late. Maybe not. Kaiser actually is going to live through that. And Envy, still diving, gets under the tier four towers. So they will actually not be able to escape. I think Lodre. somebody needs to come back, though. Oh, trying to go for a base race. I mean, 
Hunter Wyvern can stand up here and do this, but Mask of Madness popped, and this tower is gone so quickly. They again drop the ultimate, but I don't think it's going to be enough as Owie is still up front and center. They're able to burn through all of the mana. Can go for the Omni Slash after the fact if he wants to, and Owie is down. Do they get anything more on top of this, though? Swift Ending has spin back up in a second and actually didn't end up going for the spin TP. A little bit of a misplay there, and he'll be punished for it. Awkward. Probably thought that his, his cooldown was up. Or something like that, and then pressed it right before it was up. Happens sometimes. Yeah. The lone druid, though, he's a big problem because they they can't get to the team fight high ground push that they want. They got a big kill. And they had ages, but unable to capitalize on it. Probably need BOTs at some point too. Go, 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 go. Buy it. Probably Weaver because he doesn't have any boots. It's a natural progression for him. Well, and Weaver is level 21 now, has the 200 health, didn't go for the Agi. Just all about the survivability with his talents. But Cloud9 with a little bit of an edge in this one in terms of net worth, but it's swinging, I believe, soon into Hellraiser's favor. This lone druid is so hard to deal with. Was well, he dead? Every time I look over, Kaiser's just getting owned. That's been the story of this game. Like, remember when he could have bought his item <laughs> again? He could have had like 600 gold now and one of those. Gold management is hard. Yeah. Game is hard. Oh, finally! They get to push mid when Lone Druid is not at their base. This is the dream. Alright, they're doing it. They got the lift, they got the Sakuchi away. Hellraiser's trying to hold on to their tier tower, tier three tower desperately. And the glyph will come out. In the meantime, Bear is pushing top to take down the tier two tower. They should be able to secure that one at the very least, but it's a high price to pay, and well the jump forward, Rubik going to get caught, going to be killed off. They also dropped the brew split and now Swift ending in a lot of trouble. The physical damage is not nearly going to be enough coming from him. And the hook shot to try and turn it, not going to be there either. They still spike Carapace. That's not good enough. The lift up of the Rubik. But in the meantime, back at home, it is the bear taking down the barracks. He's able to get down one at the very least. Can he get any more off the back of this 3-3? He's trying to TP back home, but it's not going to happen. He gets controlled, killed off. And now getting ran down by Pylai Die and NV33 dead. Ultra kill for Fata. And maybe gonna be able to find some more. Eats the cheese. Is Swift any even gonna be able to kill him off? I'm not sure. They've still got the Spirit Siphon there. The silence onto several. Mantis style trying to make this happen. But if they can kill off Fata, might finally be some sort of small solace. Since they only took a range barracks. Gale there as well, but Fata is just too strong. Even against three or four heroes, he doesn't care. Octarine Core and Spirit Siphon are just too strong. And they can maybe go on a little further now that Envy has finally arrived. Hey, they barracks down. They're doing it. Cloud Nine. A big old win for them there. 5,000 net worth swing and 15,000 experience. So much base damage. Oh, and MSS has Ags. Didn't even see that. Get the Drunken Haze. Yeah. Drunken Haze on, on the Storm Panda. All right, well, still scouting. Owie will run into a couple. It just feels like they need a gem or something. This Kaiser is gonna keep on getting caught. The Impale doesn't manage to find him, but everything else will just about. He finally gets his Agnum Scepter, and unfortunately, looks like he is going to die in spite of that. Weaver holding on to that Aegis, just now being reclaimed, and Cloud9 on the verge of finishing off this series 2-0. Unless Hellraisers can come up with something spectacular, and honestly, at this point, it needs to be along the lines of a base race bottom. Wow, that's a pretty strong finish. Coming out with six wins when they had one. They were they were down in the dumps. Yeah. At the start of the group stage. And this is more of where I expected them to be. I had, I had high hopes for Cloud9 going into the event, and they're still lacking in the teamwork. I don't know. They do have a couple of days to recoup before the group stage. However, their fate will be the one that they are starting off. I like that I just killed the courier. Frog. <laughs>
Didn't have anything on it, but still pretty cool. And now the game becomes so hard, too. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree, though. I, I, I kind of wonder how much of it was just that Cloud9 had very tough opponents through those first couple of days, and then, like, you know, it, if you do run into issues, maybe there's some, you know, internal issues that come after the fact, and, like, that's why they weren't looking as good. I don't know. What do you think? Their teamwork is off. The simplest way I can put it. Like... Remember we were casting that game yesterday and someone got jumped top and there were four TPs immediately? I've never seen that from Cloud9 this tournament. There's, they're not all in to save their teammates and win some big team fight. This is a Death Prophet strat too. Death Prophet generally promotes a lot of five man, a lot of group up, and I think they were down like five, six, seven thousand gold and they started finally grouping out towards the top where I think they should have been much and I think better teams are going to be more aware of their tendencies too. Like, for example, when they smoked and decided to take Roach instead of actually take a team fight. The teams know that Cloud9 played this sort of style. Yeah. And also teams can just fight them a lot early because they know they aren't gonna is they aren't gonna beat together as five a lot of the time. So. I was watching the newbie VP games as we might see a pick off here on 3-3. Three, three trying to do what he can to find some split push. They're going to be able to control the bear and most likely him as well. The BKB pop, the TP away, but the Winter's Curse comes out and the bear is now going to help in the death of his master. Poor lone druid getting ran at, getting killed. And just a little BM lift up with the cyclone to boot. Immediately buys back. He has the ags on the bear. Yeah. Fado was actually smart enough to kill the bear too. Mm -hmm. I don't think it was just him being greedy. He did, I believe, notice that the Lotro did have Ag, so it's super important to kill the bear. Yeah, but I was watching the VP newbie games, and it was like newbie was still doing the things where they would TP and like four heroes to fight mid. But then it was something where VP would bring four heroes to start. So it's like teams are already prepping for that type of style and being prepared for it. Um, and yeah, it's it does sort of. Raise a lot of questions for sure. This team is going to look like going forward. 3 3 knows he has to split push, knows that he has to put the team on his back at this point. But it feels like it might be a fool's errand. They have got the lift up. Able to take and catch that next assassin. Highlight eye there as well. And the hook shot off the mark. A little bit of a juke, a little bit of a jive. Well, I die, cool as a cucumber. Don't go down without a fight, Hellraisers. Uh-oh. That, that looks like that could be a really bad Winter's Curse, but good decision to back out before it happens. And seeing that there's creeps inside their base, I die could have an opening here. Honestly, if they just want to walk forward with the Exorcism, could be the death of him as well. Swift ending, walking forward. Milan there as well. They got the catch on the Pylai die. The Yule Scepter lift up, keeping him alive for the moment, but still in trouble. Doesn't manage to get off at Winter's Curse, but they are going to be able to control and deal a lot of damage to Swift ending here. Off to the side. Aoi trying to open up onto Milan. He's going to be able to have a nice setup over here on the north side of the fight. Fata controlling Kaiser. He's silenced. Did get off the ulti, but there's just too much regen coming in from that Octarine Cord. Swift ending also soon to die. The triple kill for Fata. J4 trying to hook away to make sure that he doesn't end up dropping. But it's only a delay of the inevitable. As the Winter's Curse comes out, GG ends up getting called. Cloud9 will get six wins and put themselves further up in the groups. We bid a sad farewell to Team Hellraisers, who did unfortunately finish at the very bottom of Group B and will not be proceeding forth in this year's international. I feel for them. It hurts. It really hurts to not play on the main stage. Yeah. But that's the way that it ends up going down sometimes, and uh, they'll move on. Bigger and brighter things, I'm sure. At some point in time, they're all very talented players and deserve to be here. Uh, but for now, that's going to do it for us. I believe that a couple of other games were determining if there's going to be tiebreakers or not. They may or may not have finished at this point, but at least for us, it's going to be uh, the end of casting on this stream four. But the group stage stage is done. Main event right around the corner in a couple days over at Key Arena. Stay tuned, everybody. TI7 continues in full force in a few days.